Welcome to our tech troubleshooting session. Today, we're tackling a frustrating issue that many developers encounter when working with API Gateway. Our viewer is experiencing a problem where their API Gateway mock integration works perfectly during testing, but fails with a 500 internal server error when accessed through the actual URL. Let's dive into the details and see how we can help resolve this issue. Welcome back to another technical video. Today, I'll be going through your question, answering it, and hopefully finding that solution that you're looking for. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy like me, and hopefully you work through that resolution. Let's continue on. Let's begin by understanding the issue with your API Gateway integration. You mentioned that the integration works when tested via the AWS CLI, but fails when accessed through the deployed URL. When you invoke the API using the command line, you receive a successful response with a status code of 200. However, when you try to access the same endpoint through the browser or curl, you encounter a 500 error. One possible reason for this discrepancy could be related to the configuration of your API gateway stages. Ensure that the stage you are trying to access is correctly set up and that the resource path is properly mapped. Additionally, review your CloudWatch logs for any error messages that might indicate what went wrong during the execution. The logs suggest a configuration error related to the status code. Finally, ensure that your API Gateway Win method settings do not require an API key unless intended. If your method is set to require an API key and one is not provided, it could lead to a 403 forbidden error. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. If you're facing a 500 internal server error with Amazon API Gateway mock integration, there are two common issues to check. First, ensure that the status code in your mapping template is an integer, not a string. For example, use 200 instead of 200. Second, mock integrations don't support binary content. If your API has binary support enabled, it can lead to a 500 error. For more details, check the link provided. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. There are two main issues with your API gateway configuration. First, your base path mappings don't align with how you're invoking the API. The stable base path is not defined, leading to a 403 forbidden error. Instead, use the latest base path for the stable stage. The second issue is a configuration error indicated in your CloudWatch logs. It states that the status code should be an integer in your request template. Make sure your integration request template includes status code 200 as a top-level attribute. Additionally, it's unusual to use the same file for both request and response templates. Consider separating them for clarity.
Let's now look at another user suggested answer. To resolve the API Gateway Mock Integration 500 error, the user deleted their options request definition in the AWS console. They then used the Enable Course feature, which created a new options method. Next, they ran Terraform plan to compare their options definition with the new one created by AWS. Since the new method worked, they applied the changes. It's important to note that using Terraform version 0.12 or greater allows for more detailed output during the planning phase. Let's now look at another user suggested answer. When deploying a Lambda function with the serverless framework, the options method returns a 200 status. However, manually configuring it in AWS API Gateway results in a 500 internal server error. The execution log indicates a configuration error, stating it was unable to transform the request, leading to the internal server error message. To fix this, first, configure the options method's integration request by adding a mapping template for application JSON, ensuring the template is status code 200 without quotes. Next, in the integration response, ensure the 200 response mapping template for application JSON is empty. Then, add necessary headers in the method response. Finally, enable cores for the resource and deploy the API to apply the changes. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. The issue was resolved by creating a deployment using the AWS CLI for each stage. It turns out that Terraform wasn't updating the deployments with changes, which meant my updates weren't being applied. And that's it, guys. I hope this video has helped you find that solution that you're looking for. If it did, please hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, I hope you have a good one. Cheers.